This video was sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. Okay, this is a strong pack. I like the specialist a reasonable amount. It's probably not better than the Dawn Guard or Clear Shot, though. I think Clear Shot is a really nice card. Really great removal spell. Spell Rune Painter, pretty good, too. You do have to end up in the right deck. It's pretty good in any deck, really, but it's really good in blue red. Um, and the Dawn Guard draws you cards, which is great. I've been pretty impressed with it overall. So it's really between the clear shot and the dawn guard, I think. You know, uh, Defenestrate's nice, but I would take both of these over it. Um, it's probably, I'd probably take it over the specialist too, though. Specialist is probably like fourth in this pack. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I did do budget decks a long, long ago on my YouTube channel. It's true, but it's I don't really play much constructed these days. I think we take clear shot in the end. I think it's good enough that I want to take it over the dawn guard. So we're in the middle of a slump. Should we just grab Ominous Roost and go for it? <laughs> you know, it's a little tempting. Uh, it's a cool card. I don't think we're quite... I think when we get to the, the last weekend of this format, I'm going to force Ominous Roost. We're not quite there yet, uh, but we're getting close. Might be next weekend I might force an Ominous Roost deck. That said, I think we probably take Eccentric Farmer here. Um, it's great. Sets up the self-mill deck. Even if you're not a self-mill deck, it's pretty good. I do like the Angler a reasonable amount uh, as well, but I think we take the Farmer here. Could have used that card in our last deck. Um, okay, so here's an Oregon Hoarder. We definitely grab that. It's excellent. It's better than most of the rares and mythics in this format. It is indeed better than Moonrager's Slash, as crazy as that is. Uh, you know, this card looks... Like, it would be completely absurd. And it is really good, but it's not as good as Organ Hoarder. The Hoarder also combos well with the self-mill plan, if that's what we're looking at. So, uh, yeah. I think we grab Organ Hoarder here. Okay, we've got another Farmer, which is really good. Um, you know, you know, we've seen some good Werewolf stuff. But, you know, that deck has to be... You have to get, like, all the uncommons, or it's not really very functional. Um, but, yeah, I think we take the Farmer here. Right now, we don't have any payoffs for milling ourselves, but I think we'll get there um, sooner or later. So here's one. It's not great, but it is one because it has Disturb. Um, I'm leaning towards Revenge of the Drowned here, although I do like the Observer in this deck because if you get, like, Rise of the Ants and stuff like that, it gets to be pretty awesome because it ramps you into it when you cast it and ramps you into it when it's in your graveyard, uh, which I guess it would do either way, but, you know... So it's either Revenge of the Drowned, I mean, Gale Drifter, and Unblinking Observer. These are all things I like. The Revenge of the Drowned is not nearly as synergistic as the other options. But you can get as many Observers and Gale Drifters as you want, usually. So I think I'll take Revenge here. I mean, it's not nearly as good in this deck as it is in some others. But okay, here we go. Now we're in business. This mills us, and it has Disturb. It's perfect. You know, I love this card in any deck, and I really like it in this one. Shipwreck Sifter's pretty nice in this deck, too, but nowhere near as good as the Castaway. All right, here we snap up this Bait Hook Angler really happily. I've really enjoyed this card a lot in the format, partly because in my set review, I gave it a really good grade, and people thought I was insane, and I was pretty much right, just saying. <laughs> Plenty of things I was wrong about, but... <laughs> That was not one of them. Uh, we don't want Path to the Festival. You can do some wacky jack-o'-lantern things sometimes with this deck because you mill yourself so much, but I think we probably just grabbed a guide. He's a nice little two-drop. He's nothing special, but he's fine. So this mills us. Not a bad thing to have. I like it more than Bounding Wolf. Uh, it's not a bad finisher. Okay, so Ominous Roost, huh? So right now, you know, I was saying I don't want to force it yet, but this is the deck where it can excel. And flip the switch, not amazing here. And there is a Harvest Tide Sentry, which is a perfectly reasonable two drop. It's probably the responsible pick, unfortunately. If I already had like five cards that triggered the roost, I think I'd go for it. But I think we just go for that two drop as unexciting as that is. Here we'll grab Silver Bolt. Removal is good and it's pretty nice removal overall. Grab another Timberland Guide. 
And here's the Observer. I think we want it more than Pestilent Wolf in this deck. Um, okay. <laughs> we drafted a red-white deck in our last draft, and now we, and we didn't see this rare or the signpost, which is hurts my soul a little bit. Granted, this card's actually not that great. I mean, it's good, but it's not, you know, it's not a bomb rare or even close to it. Um, this pack's not amazing for us. I don't like the Tome a whole lot. It's a little slow. I haven't been that impressed with it overall. Um, but our other options, not amazing. You know, I'm not so into self-mill that I want to jam a bunch of tapping at the windows into my deck. I would need, like, the uh, Blob Rare or... Um, there's a couple other cards where I'd consider jamming it. Uh, Slogurk, things like that. So, rares. <laughs> uh... God, I guess we're going to take the Tome. It might be fine here. The rest of that pack was just so... Oh, hello. Okay, we're in business now. We got us some Slogurk going. Um, I would love an Oregon Hoarder or a Locked in the Cemetery. Well, really love this. Love this a little less. Love this still less, but if one of those wheels will be happy. Even the Rejuvenator might be okay, but we have to take Slogurk here. He's one of the big win conditions for the deck. The thing you have to do, though, if you have Slogurk, is be running cards that let you get him back. Because if you mill your Slogurk on accident, it's pretty rough. But there are there are enough cards in the format that let you do that. So, Gale Drifter's okay, but even in a deck that's not a zombie deck, I think Scob Wrangler is just better. And I don't think we want the Rejuvenator that badly at this point. Um, so I think we just take the Wrangler. Triska Decophile is a nice card to have, but there's also another Eccentric Farmer. God, do I have enough do I have enough value to get out of my graveyard that I want to take another farmer, a third farmer over my Triska over a Triska Decophile? Probably. I probably do it. Yeah, I think we're gonna take the farmer. Triska Decophile's nice, but so this is one way to get stuff back. It's not one I like very much. I would prefer the shuffly one uh, with flashback. I think it's a little better, um, but we probably need to take it. We have enough self mill, and we don't really want to mill our Slogurk, and there's a few other cards we'd like to get back. And yeah, I mean, the Observer may come all the way back around, which is fine by me. So there's another one anyway. So Graph Keeper's interesting. If we had enough fixing, you know, going in, into this could be worthwhile. We don't have any fixing. Um, so the other option is that I take an Observer. So I think we take a Graph Keeper and maybe we luck into some fixing that makes the Graph Keeper worth it. That'd be cool. Okay, well, four Eccentric Farmers is kind of fixing. <laughs> and uh, that's definitely what we're picking up here. Ah, oh, yes. So this is good for the deck. Um, you know, we're going to get things in our graveyard quickly. Silver Bolt's nice and a little tempting because we don't have a ton of removal, but we definitely want Death Bonnet Sprout. It's the synergistic pick there for us, for sure. So we're still not really a tapping at the window deck. Um, I think we want one of these. I mean, we're not exactly an aggro deck, but we're not exactly a devious cover-up deck either. I think we take another Sentry. Screelix, how many spells do we have? Three. So Screelix, probably not what we're interested in. We'll just grab Consider here. Grab the best card out of that pack. Um, Secrets of the Key in this deck isn't too shabby. I like it a little more than the Spirit. It may not make the cut in the end, but... Yeah, that signpost making it around is interesting. Like, if that's happening, the Werewolf deck can be pretty good if, if that card goes all the way around. All right, so we've got a Lord of the Forsaken, which is pretty sweet. Not where, where we're headed, given our situation. Even with four eccentric farmers, I don't think we can do it. I think we'd probably just grab another Death Bonnet Sprout. I would like Shipwreck Sifters or Baithook Angler, but I think the Sprout is, is better, uh, you know, in terms of being a graveyard payoff than they are. Um, so, yeah, we'll grab another Sprout. Ooh. Okay, so we've got Augur of Autumn here, which is great. There is potentially a fifth Eccentric Farmer. And if I had, you know, there are definitely some situations where maybe you take the fifth over the Augur, but we're not in it. We don't have so much graveyard action that that's what we want to do. We just take Augur of Autumn here, and she's awesome. So, so we're happy with that. Um, okay, so Outlay Liberator is not bad. Gives you a way to blow up some problem permanents. There aren't a ton of them in the format, but they're around. 
and it's just a decent two drop the sifters is maybe a little more synergistic but it's definitely better in like blue white than it is in our deck and yeah we don't have any spirits at this point so i don't think we're that interested in it i think we'd probably just take the good two drop silver bolt's kind of worth a look but i like the liberator enough that i think i take it here okay uh interesting so there is a deserted beach uh in the graph keeper conversation we have um we're short enough on removal we probably have to take locked in the cemetery here yeah i think that's what we do hound tamer i mean it's not really synergistic but it's just a good creature and i think it's what we'll take here Okay, uh, Duel for Dominance is pretty good. Uh, I think we have enough decent-sized creatures that were interested in it. Ooh, gosh, this pack. So we've got Winterthorn Blessing, which is quite good. Another Farmer. I, I think four is probably good. I think we're interested in the Blessing. I mean, we're actually a pretty aggressive deck that has, you know, this graveyard theme, but pretty aggressive overall. Like, our curve is actually going to be quite low. Uh, and the blessing is really strong, so. Oh, wow. Okay. Root Coil Creeper here is great. Gives us fixing. Great two drop. Can rebuy a flashback spell. You know, the one thing we don't have that would make this deck great is Revenge of the Ants or something like that. Um, but, yeah. So, I don't think we're there on the roost still, unfortunately. Um, it might still be the pick here. Yeah, Sifters still don't look great. I think it would just be the pick here anyway, so that's where we're going to go. So a fifth farmer if we want it. Um, I don't think we do. I mean, we have graveyard stuff, but not nearly as much as is, like, ideal. So I think we probably would like a bird far bird admirer here. Geist Wave's okay. Pestle Wolf's okay. They both have an equally low chance of making our deck, I think. Um... Take Geist Wave. Take Tapping at the Window. So, hmm. There are a few, like, little flashback cards. There are a few cards we can consider splashing, thanks to our four farmers and the uh, two drop. It is a bit of a bummer we didn't pick up Rise of the Ants or something like that. That's, like, the big uncommon that you really want in this deck. I mean, we ended up kind of being more aggressive than anything else. Um, which is weird, given how that draft went, but, yeah, so, <laughs> that's where we ended up. Um, I mean, we have, we have graveyard stuff for sure, but not so much that I'm pumped, but, I mean, our curve is actually pretty incredible. <laughs> and we could even probably get away with 16 land, since our farmers will help us find more of them. Um, so how much did we end up with? Did we end up with enough for our roost? I think the answer is no, so, but let's see, one, two, three... Yeah, no. Four. <laughs> Not so much. Is this literally our only card with flashback? We ended up... That's really weird. We're going to be leaning more on, like, Death Bonnet Sprout. We have a lot of creatures, so we're going to mill a lot of them, and so our sprouts will be doing work. We're going to be leaning more on that than, like, flashback or disturb in this particular deck, which is interesting. Um, I mean, also slow Gurk. Like, those are, the, those are the big win conditions that we're kind of aiming for, I guess. Um, so the Observer is not great in this deck. It probably ends up getting cut. We do have eight instants and sorceries, I guess, but probably don't play Geist Wave. I mean, Secrets of the Key is kind of nice, but if we don't have that much going on to really pay us off for milling it, I probably am not that interested. So I think we cut Secrets of the Key there. Um... We have to leave in Dryad's Revival, sort of, because of our slow Gurk. I would have liked to pick up a better way to get things back from the graveyard, but we just didn't do it. So we kind of have to run it. Probably don't run the Tome. I mean, again, we're basically an aggro deck. Um, we have some creative things going on, but uh, we're mostly an aggro deck. Does that mean we're less interested in the Amalgam? I mean, probably. We're milling ourselves enough, and it's not that great of a finisher... I mean, it is one, but... 
Maybe we want to leave it, though, more than we want to keep some of these lower curve cards. Like, the ones that don't have a ton of synergy with our deck. I mean, the Observer is just not going to be that good. Um, sentries are okay. i probably leave them. But we do have a lot of cards we need to cut. I mean, Consider is probably going to get cut. It's usually an easy, pretty, pretty easy card to cut. Uh... Yeah, we definitely can go to 16 lands, so that's good. And I think going to 8 forests, 8 islands probably is where we end up. It's a little sketchy, but not crazily so. I see one of the big mistakes I see people make a lot in Limited, like on, you know, there's a Discord for my patrons and they post decks and stuff. And they're running like 666 six, six mana bases or whatever. And I'm like, that just like stresses me out, you know. You can't, you can't do that. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I mean, our colors were open enough that trimming this down is a little tricky. Which I guess is a good problem to have, but... It's tough. Um... Yeah, sometimes you hear people call it the Devil's Mana Base. <laughs> for more reasons than one, you know. One of them is that you're really increasing your chances of having mana problems, and the other is... You know, the number of the beast, according to Hebrew numerology. Um, yeah. Tough to cut this thing. I mean, we could cut back a little on some of the aggressive creatures. I mean, we want to be a little aggressive. We want to be fairly aggressive even, but... I mean, maybe we don't need Revenge of the Drowned in this deck. We have some removal <laughs> definitely not a lot i know a fair bit about hebrew numerology yeah i have a phd in medieval jewish history <laughs> so not an expert on it i wouldn't say but you know i know where the number of the beast comes from for example but yeah it's the name of nero in hebrew the roman emperor in hebrew numerology anyway gotta cut cards here <laughs> it's not going well um, I mean, I keep coming back to Bird Admirer, but we have so few flyers, we probably want it. We probably cut the Amalgam. It's not great. Um, <laughs> and then... I probably cut some twos. I mean, we have a ton of them. Uh, we definitely don't need as many as we have. I can probably, like, Timberland Guide, like, one Sentry, one Timberland Guide I can I can live with. Um, we have enough creatures that Wrangler is pretty legit, even though we're not, like, a zombie deck. Um, our curve is so low. Like, if I cut Revenge of the Drown, I may even be able to get away with 15 lands. I kind of think we can. That means we can put one card back in. So it needs to be a lower curve card, but I think we can get away with it. Um, we want the forests more because the farmer can find us our islands. So... Yeah, we could put back in Secrets of the Key, Consider, Observer, Geist Wave. They're all reasonable, and I'm going to put one of them in. I just need to decide which one. Geist Wave does give us another way to interact. Um, we already have a lot of creatures, so I'm okay with Geist Wave. We can also use it to bounce some stuff. Sometimes that matters. You know, our own stuff, that is. You consider it's a little more synergistic, for sure. I mean, it's not great, um, but it is, it is synergistic with our milling. And maybe we'd like to have another value card. That's, I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, all of those cards is, I mean, we are aggro, it's true, mostly, uh, we're like an aggro graveyard deck. Yeah, Geist Wave's probably better, just bouncing a thing. Yeah, you know, if we want to run 15 lands, you have a good point there, the world hates Paul. We probably want to run Consider, makes it easier to run that many lands, and we probably don't run Geist Wave. 
Yeah. Alright. Our mana's not incredible, but I think it's okay. Um... Ooh, so turn one. This is a pretty aggressive little curve out we can get going. Um, deck has a lot of creatures, so milling milling into into them with our death bonnet sprouts not super hard. Yep, there's one. <laughs> I think we do play the liberator here. You know, we want to sort of hold on to the other sprout if we can. Winterthorn Blessing can be a real beating if we keep, if we get to keep staying this far ahead of our opponent. It's going to be a real beating for them. Um, when does this transform? Upkeep. So I may as well attack first. Then we'll play our Farmer, and it may just transform next turn. We did lose our Augur, but, you know, it's whatever. We're in really good shape here. Boom. <laughs> okay, so... Probably Winterthorn Blessing is what we want to do here. Yeah, so I think we go Winterthorn Blessing. And then play the other Death Bonnet Sprout so it transforms. So, where do we want to put the counter? I guess making this a 3-4 is pretty appealing. This is going to get bigger on its own. Yeah. Damn. So, I don't think our opponent can win. I would be very surprised if they find a way to. <laughs> Let's hope that things keep going like that. So the number one trip tip for drafting, yeah, I would say is figure out what's open. You can't, I mean, you know, nobody's perfect at doing that, but that's, that is the biggest thing. You know, there's not a, you know, certain color pair or anything you should focus in on, but. Yeah, let's hope we uh, continue to have dream games like that. <laughs> I mean, that's what this deck is capable of. I think we're going to run into some mana problems at some point, but maybe not. We really only need three, and then the whole deck is functional. And that's pretty nice. So this hand's not great due to the complete absence of green, but we're going second, and we have a card we can play anyway. I think it's a keep. You know, it could be this mana problem uh, hand, but I think on the draw, I'm okay with doing it. We have a few turns to find uh, green, and, and we do it, so that's good. So we're up against black-blue, which is a pretty potent deck on average. So we probably play Slow Gurk next, and then try to Eccentric Farmer Value Town things. Um, the fact they have a Death Toucher does make that a little more of a pain, but yeah, I think we still do it. Not going to have quite as spicy of a start as we did last time, but. I guess running fewer lands makes Slowkirk a little worse because we're less likely to mill them. So flip the switch is fairly likely here. Um, question is whether I want to try to run something out there. Or try to just play our farmer. Aren't the thing? I mean, we have four farmers, so if this one fails, it's not a big deal. The problem is Slogurk can't really attack here anyway, so making Slogurk bigger also isn't really a big deal at this juncture. Um, I almost feel like playing the Wrangler might be the best play here because we could tap down their Death Toucher. Yeah, I think I like that. 
Let's see if it gets a switch flipped. It does not. So they're gonna kill Slogurk here. We're just gonna bounce him or put him on top of our library. Um Do we let that happen? Do we want to put it on top? It's kind of a pain to put it on top. But I think we probably do, yeah. So now they can bleed us out for one. All right, so I think I block with Covetous Castaway here. Oh, wait, no, I don't. <laughs> I was thinking I could kill it if I did. Um, blocking with the Wrangler is not terrible. I mean, it's not looking super likely that we'll go wide enough. So, same time it's tapped anyways. I think we probably just take it this time. They may make us discard here with the 3-4 Flyer. Oh, nope, they do with no way out, though. Ouch. Uh, you know, I think we have to hold on to Clear Shot and Hound Tamer. They're the two most powerful cards, like in a vacuum. I know Eccentric Farmer can set up our Slogurk, but I still, I mean, I think, I think we probably lose. Hold on to those two and get rid of the Bird Admirer and the Farmer. Which is kind of rough, but given where we are in the game, I think it's what we needed to do. Uh, okay, so I'll play Slogurk again here. Pass. I think holding on to the removal and the really problematic creature is better. I mean, maybe giving up the synergy of our farmer is bad, but... So, I think we just take two again. Here's hoping they don't make us discard another card here. <laughs> they may with the 3-4 flyer. I guess I would hold on to clear shot if that's what happened there. All right, so we're going to target their siege zombie. So if they want to do damage here, they have to do it now, which is nice. Alright, so there's a decent chance that what they're holding up is like uh, the 2 1 Nebelgast. Um, but we can use Clear Shot if that happens. I think I'd probably rumble with Slogurk here. Um, and then try to play Hound Tamer and hope it doesn't get countered, basically. That's what we're looking at. Yeah. All right, that's encouraging. Defenestrate. No, Revenge of the Drowned. So, what do I want to do here? I kind of, sort of want to put it on the bottom, but I guess it's enough of a problem that I'll put it back on top, yeah. They are going far wider than we'd like over there. I mean, that's what this deck does. Um, so, yeah. They're about to exile a card from our graveyard, too, and make another one. That is not good. Blue-black, when it, when it gets together, is just an absurd deck, and it comes together relatively easy. That's one of the big problems... Um, so we kind of, we have to block here, unfortunately for us, and we will. I think they must have a way to kill us or they wouldn't have attacked us. So, uh, yeah. Okay, maybe not. Do they have corpse cobble? No. Interesting. You don't often see that happen. 
They must have a way to finish us off here. That's the only thing that makes any sense to me. So, I wish I had a land in my graveyard. Then I'd be more willing to block with Slogurk, but maybe I should be willing anyway. I mean, I have a few cards I could draw that make Slogurk a real problem. But I don't have them right now. And I do have Hound Tamer's ability. I could block with the Castaway, but it doesn't seem worth it. I think we block with Slogurk here. We're low enough on life, we kind of have to do it. Um, we could get him back later. I mean, it's not ultra likely, but we could. We're kind of in okay shape, and I'm not really sure how that is the case, but it kind of is. <laughs> so... I probably play a creature here. I think we'll play our Liberator. It'll be a 3-3, so. They may have a way to sneak in enough damage here if they counter this. It gets close if they can counter this. But they haven't countered anything all game. But maybe they've just been waiting for the right opening. Okay, well. Dissipate. Not something I'm ultra concerned about. Um, I was worried they'd get a 2-2 to add to the board, and that would be bad for us. Oh, crap. <laughs> Luckily, I can kill it, but what are they going to put in their graveyard? Another forest would be a pretty great draw, wouldn't it? So, a 2-2 two, two, flyer, yeah, that's a problem. Alright, so we'll block this and go to 4. Yeah. Okay. Another green mana would be good, but... Kind of like what I'm seeing here. So I think we attack with Untamed Pup here. And if we get them to block, we can get a blowout. If they don't block, well... Um, we kill the carriage anyway. I guess the awkward thing here is I don't really want... Hmm... Yeah, if I had another green mana, this would have worked out better. Because I have to use clear shot. Um, and that means I'll have to fight the death touch creature, but hopefully I can do it without giving up my untamed pup. So. A block would have been awesome, but it, they didn't really have a reason to block, frankly. So, you know. <sighs> Come on, green mana. Or any creature that will give me a uh, coven. Well, coven doesn't actually help that much. Alright, so they tap you down. Ugh. Uh, so, I mean, it's not a disaster. Gives me a chance to, like, wait things out and maybe find some action. I mean, I guess it's what we do here. So, we probably throw the angler away and grab a forest, because we've desperately needed another forest. This is a close one. I mean, I feel like we're very close to actually turning a corner. But 
we're not we're not quite there so we do have coven now which means i can use the castaway to fight the geist unfortunately for us they also have mana up so oh well um that's pretty good I'd probably just go that route uh, because it's more guaranteed to work out for us <laughs> than if we try to do something else. So, yeah, I think we play Silverbolt here. And while they have one card in their hand, I think we just fire it off to kill the Flyer. We can't really attack. It's way too dangerous for that. We need to be careful about double spelling. Um... Very careful. <laughs> unless we unless we kill the component collector, anyway. Uh, yeah, we need to be careful. So... I think we play Timberland Guide, pump the Organ Hoarder. Swing with both. Leave up mana for Duel for Dominance. Okay, so yeah, we'll just do the we'll do the eight here. Um, yeah, I guess we'll play this land. I don't want to double spell because then they can tap a blocker. So we're gonna pass. All right, we got there. That was very different from our first win. Our first win was one where we just ran our opponent over, and in that one, we sort of slowly. Worked our way back into the game with value and removal and stuff. So we've had two very different wins, which I think is probably a good thing if our deck can operate on both of those axes. Um, I think we're pretty happy with that. It was sad for our poor Slogurk to just trade for a thing in that game. <laughs> but... You know, worked out pretty well in the end. Nice hand. Be nice, nicer if we had, you know, some, uh, some of our graveyard payoffs, but, you know. So, I think we play the Creeper first in case we draw, you know, another two drop or something and we want a double spell. Ooh. So, I don't think we're going to double spell. Uh, we're going to rumble with the Creeper here and then play Slogurk. And then double Eccentric Farmers will be pretty spicy, we hope. Slogurk may just die here, but looks that way. Yeah. Slogurk goes down. So I could double spell here, play a farmer and a guide. It's not a terrible plan. Um, it's probably what we do. I mean, we give up two damage. I guess we'll play a farmer first and see what happens. Yeah, that's probably a little better. Get back an island. Two damage or another creature that makes another thing bigger. I mean, it gets us to Coven, so that's probably where I want to go. Okay, so, yeah, so we'll duel for dominance here to kill this. And then, yeah, we'll attack for five and then we're gonna play the farmer, second farmer.
We haven't milled any graveyard value cards, but we have milled a graveyard payoff and a clear shot. People get hung up a little more than they should on that sort of thing when they play self-mill, but, you know, it does suck a little, but it's variance. I mean, you can't be like, I'm not going to mill myself because I might mill something really awesome. Uh, you just can't do it. Okay. So we got Dryad's Revival. Can it get back any card? Oh, man, that's gross. Okay. So we're going to use Dryad's Revival, get back Clear Shot. Do we want the dominance more? Nah. On this board state, I guess it is better, basically. Yeah, so we will get duel for dominance. They're tapped out. We've got Coven. So then we go duel for dominance. Got there. That was more like our first win, but still a little more... A little less... Well, no, we were pretty ag aggro in that game, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's probably generally better, like, in the situation we were in to play Farmer first to see not only if we hit a forest with it, but to see if we mill something that we want to play more with the mana we have. <clears throat> okay uh you know if we hit a third land we're gonna run our opponent over probably so let's hope we do uh good chance that we do overall i mean just death bonnet sprout farmer 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 is Gonna be pretty good. <laughs> yeah, this is a pretty sweet deck. It's my favorite archetype in the format. It, you know, it took me a while to get there on it, but uh, now I'm pretty happy with I've, I've liked it a fair bit. We did mill a land, which again, you know, don't get too hung up on it, but it is a bit of a bummer. If we keep milling a land and drawing a non-land, that's gonna be frustrating, but... But it didn't go down that way. Uh, this thing can't block... But I guess, yeah, we'll do this anyway. We get a land back. We also milled two creatures, so that's good. We'll get a forest. And we will attack. So if we mill one more creature, our sprout will, at the end of our next turn anyway, uh, transform. We did not. But... Because we can't play the auger and a land this turn, I'd probably just play another farmer here. So I think we go to combat here, and I think we attack with farmer and sentry, because we may get in two free damage here. They may be afraid to do other things, which we're down with. Okay, well, we don't. But it's also not, not any sort of actual risk. So, yeah, then we'll play our farmer... All right, so Death Bonnet Sprout is about to transform. Should it continue to live anyway, it'll transform on our turn. Oh. So they can exile a creature, which will slow down our Death Bonnet. Uh, yeah. And they did. Oh, I guess I still had enough. I didn't think I did. Uh, so, okay, I think we probably play Augur of Autumn here, hope to hit a land, we'll have Coven going too, so, actually we don't anymore because our Death Bonnet Hulk got too big, uh, I still think we play it and hope to hit a land and we do, um, we can't actually attack now, I mean, it's not, it's not worth doing at this point. But I think that's okay. I think we'll grind out enough value here to be in good shape. Waffles are good without syrup, Leningrad. I mean, syrup's good, but, you know. <laughs> so.
So we're gonna take four. Um, all day. We'll take four there, I think. Uh-oh. They don't have any cards in their graveyard, so that's kind of funny. Um, so we'll exile our Ska Wrangler. Make that a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, kind of a bummer to have Dryad's Revival on top, but the bright side is we'll be able to get something back pretty potent on a future turn. Um... So, I can actually farmer. Oh, I shouldn't have played a land, because I can farmer. And then if we have a land on top, I could play that. Or we can just play our other Death Bonnet Sprout off the top. That's cool, too. Bird Admirer would be kind of nice, but just because it can block. But what happens here if I attack with all? I mean, I definitely attack with Death Bonnet Hulk. Um... We're drawing a clear shot, which is great. So yeah, we'll just attack with the Hulk here and end our turn. So we're going to draw a clear shot. We would have loved this card in our deck. Would have had to go a little uh, less aggressive maybe, but definitely worth it. Oh, I mailed my clear shot. <laughs> I keep forgetting these things are going to happen. Uh, I guess Root Coil Creeper is the most useless of the bunch. Um, okay. So we can try a survival, get back, clear shot, kill the candle guide, and swing out, basically. Yeah. That's probably what we want to do. The Liberator can kill the Candle Guide, too, actually. That's easier. Yeah, so play Candle Guide. I mean, play the Liberator. Blow up the Candle Guide. Play this land off the top. Blow up Candle Guide. And then... Go to Combat... Oh, I did just make that into a 2-3. That's not great. The good news is Harvest Tide Sentry is unblockable. But yeah, that that's kind of not good. <laughs> uh, this will drop them to 5. Yeah, that one card, unfortunately, has both uh, types. Um... I mean, attacking with our Death Bonnet Hulk isn't terrible. And they have to double block farmers to kill them. So that might not really be that bad either. I'm definitely attacking with the sentry. Nah, it's not worth it. We just attack with sentry here. If they have a way... Uh-oh. So they're all three fours now. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think this game is getting away from us now a little bit. We're still in okay shape overall. This bird admirer would be useful. I can kill the blob, and that's probably what we need to do before things get even more out of hand. But, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's any graveyard. Good call. Good call. That's nice. 
We can go after their creature, especially, to get bigger. But yeah, that's that's a good point, Lord Waffle. Z so I definitely block the Interloper if it attacks us. I mean, they have to use a card if they're going to take down our Admirer. And if their Interloper's dead, I'll have two creatures to exile. Yeah, I had a feeling they had the cup purse, but I wasn't, like, super concerned about the, the possibility either. So they're going to get another thing here, another blob token. And then we have to blow up their blob, which we can do with Dryad's Revival to get back clear shot or whatever. So they're going to exile our Dryad's Revival now, which is a bummer. But yeah, then we exile... An interloper and then a rebirth. So play Timberland Guide off the top. Maybe we'll just rip through a bunch of cards here. That would be cool. Timberland Guide off the top. Make you a 5-5. Five five. Okay, so we can't play that. Um, but it will have a decent impact. The bad news is they still have their blob. And yeah, we can keep the tokens manageable. But if they go wide enough with them, it might not matter. <laughs> the blob. So good. They have 22 cards left and we have 7. So we're in some trouble here. To put it to put it mildly. So we're going to exile that. We're going to exile that. Slogurk, you're a little late to the game, Slogurk. However, We will play you. It's going to be tough for us to find a way to push damage through. Slogurk has Trample, but we don't have that many cards left in our deck. So it kind of doesn't matter. I'm trying to do the math to see if Double Winterthorn Blessing will get it done. I mean, we're going to have five cards left in our deck. I think maybe our best bet is to go as wide as possible... And then double Winter Thorn Blessing on our last turn. So I think that's I think that's where we're headed here. We may mill ourselves out in the process. Okay. So yeah, next turn will basically be our last turn. Because we're about to mill ourselves to death. And I don't think we're going to find a way to push through enough damage. This guy is impatient, it's true. <laughs> He's trying to pressure me so I don't make the optimal play, but... I don't think there is a super optimal one, unfortunately. Killing the blob as soon as possible was the optimal play, but... You know. Alright, so... It probably makes more sense to go after our own graveyard here to make those two creatures as big as possible. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Shrinking theirs doesn't make that much of a difference at this point. <laughs> the last card in our deck is Consider. Yeah, that's not going to do it. Uh, we'll put counters on the Trampler. Let's see if we can at least freak them out, you know. But they got us. The blob beat us, unsurprisingly. Our opponent very... Uh... Oh, wait, we actually had one more card left. 
Yeah, it was probably a mistake. Um, I don't think it would have mattered. We know we're drawing Consider next, so... <laughs> we are freaking them out a little bit, if nothing else. Seven. They have nine blockers, though, for five, six, seven, eight, nine attackers. There's just no way for me to push eight through here. Unless they make some big mistake, which I guess is what we're counting on. I wonder what our last card was. I wish there was a way to know, because if I really, I may have really screwed up. If it was, what's left in our deck? Does Cardboard Live tell you what's left in our deck? <laughs> I'm trying to think what it would be. Duel for Dominance and Clear Shot are both in the graveyard, so. Oh, good call. Let's troll them. <laughs> Before we lose, let's... Wait, you're going to block that aggressively? Yeah, block really aggressively. Yeah, their two biggest creatures do stay tapped. You're not wrong. We are going to kill a bunch of things. So there is a little hope. But I probably went to turn too early, I would say. Oh, plus these are all going to get bigger. So we may actually want to get rid of them. So they have two, four, six, eight. Oh my God, we're gonna survive. <laughs> it depends what they have in their hand, but we may actually survive. We might actually survive. Two, four, six, eight. All right, well, if they have a trick. That's gonna suck, but we'll block there and take six. We did it! <laughs> I thought I really screwed up. I thought I really screwed up there, but... Winterthorn Blessing is pretty bonkers. You know, if Winterthorn Blessing can get you out of that situation... It's pretty crazy. <laughs> you know, I think if I waited one more turn like I thought was the optimal play, we may not have been able to do enough in one swing. So I guess... Thinking my library was empty was beneficial? <laughs> Being wrong was, was beneficial. The Augur of Autumn definitely was the uh, MVP in that game. Really let us rip through our deck. The Yorgo play. <laughs> I don't think I would have done that if I thought I was going to win, even though they were doing it a bunch. Good hand. If I knew I was going to win, I wouldn't have been so such a troll, but they were trolling us. All right. Let's get our Death Bonnet Sprout online. Not a creature. Um, I think I'd probably swing and play the Liberator. Well, uh-oh. Denik is a big problem. Um, they are very likely to kill our Liberator or our Bird Admirer. I kind of think letting them do that first is a little better. Like, letting them decide what they want to bolt is going to be a little better for us. I could Timberland Guide, put the counter on our Liberator, and attack. I mean, that's not terrible. 
But it's also not great. I could also just blow up the bolt. Hmm. Huh. That is worth considering. Blow up the bolt, play Timberland Guide. Eh, I'm just gonna play another werewolf. Make them bolt our thing, whatever thing they decide to bolt. I'm sure one of them's about to die to the bolt, so. But I kind of don't care. I mean, maybe I should have. Maybe the Bird Admirer is going to be good enough in a matchup against Denik that I should have cared, but I don't think I care. Does Denik rumble? <laughs> I'd probably just take it if he does. With one red mana up, they could blow up a double block pretty significantly. We do get another creature in our graveyard. Aww. <laughs> okay. Hey. So the problem is, you know, Denik comes back as a way scarier creature. <laughs> and that is a problem. So what we want to do is get Denik to die in another way. And then... Um, use Silver Bolt. So I think we'll play our guide here. Put a counter here. And then end our turn. Uh, thank you for the follow, uh, Abstract R-A-H and the Zoe A-G. Yeah. I guess this lets them attack us back pretty, with very low cost for them. Yeah, so probably that may not have been our best our best uh, attack. It's it's an okay one still, but definitely not great, I would say. Oh, ambitious farmhand is scary. They don't have double. Oh well, yeah, they, of course they do. It always makes sure you get double white. Oh okay. Uh, okay. Some good draws there. I mean, the clear shot is really good. Uh, Silver Bolt, also pretty good against the Painter. So I think we play our Bolt here. And I think we can end our turn after we play it. Um, silver bolting the painter seems pretty reasonable. So I think we will. We could have the indestructible spell, the, uh, Plus three, plus three, indestructible for a human. If they did, they decided not to use it. Um, okay. Slowbrick hasn't really done his thing yet. People keep killing him before he can. So... I think this time we attack. See what goes down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they can't transform right now. So, yeah, we'll attack with, with our trap breaker here. Then we'll try to play Slogurk, see if he resolves or not. We do have a land in our graveyard this time. Every other time he's died, we haven't had a land, I don't think. So if they do kill him outright, then it's not a disaster. Uh, 
I haven't even looked at what the fair festival really is. I mean, we take two. Okay. Well... I could Winterthorn Blessing here and just try to do a ton of damage to them, like tap down Denik. I think that seems all right. I mean, I wish it was going to win us the game outright, but... We'll tap down Denik here. Try to. See what they do in response. All right, and then we just rumble for five. We have clear shots, so we can we can break up any fancy things they try to do here with it. Hi, Brom. Thanks for the resub. Slow Gert. <laughs> so the funny thing is, neither of us can t target cards in graveyards because of Denik. The way they keep looking at my graveyard. Ooh. So we can get a big blowout here. I think that's probably the right thing to do. Get the blowout, right? All right, so if they draw a land here, we're going to get pretty close to getting there. But I was going to say, the chances they draw one aren't, like, super high. <laughs> okay, so we're going to Winterthorn Blessing again. I kind of feel like we need to tap Denik again. Because he'll have lifelink no matter what. Um, so, yeah. We're going to make Slow Gurk a 4-4, four, four, tap down Denik. I mean, if we tap this, we can swing for 7, but then Denik untaps and can attack with lifelink. And he's a way more problematic blocker. So, I think we just go after Denik attack with both of these yeah they trade but they go to five draw a land they might have they might have drawn a land this time all right so let me play our creeper Yeah, we're going to need to find a little something else if we're going to get there. I mean, what happens if I attack with my Creeper and Slogurk here? They double block. I kill the Firmament Sage. They go up to three, and then they take two to go back down to one. The Creeper would normally be able to get back Blessing. Um, oh, it does. Yeah, you're right. Good call. Uh, can we just cast it right now? No. Yes, we could. Hmm. Yeah, I guess that's optimal here. So... Trample and all that. That should do it. Yeah, I don't know if I would have seen that one. Um... I might, yeah. So thanks, chat. <laughs> that is a win that I would, I mean, a, a thing I would have overlooked because I was thinking I couldn't target anything in my graveyard or exile because of Denik, but it was just my graveyard I couldn't target.
Might have still gotten there on my own, but would have been harder, that's for sure. Good chance we would have won anyways, it's true, but giving our opponent more turns with Firmament Sage and Denik in play wasn't exactly optimal. All right, pretty good hand. We've kept a lot of these two landers and they've gone well for us so far. Let's see how much longer that's true. Okay, so we're gonna rumble here. Nice, OFA Horus. Our Slogurk deck's doing pretty well, too. We haven't really done any silly Slogurk things at all, though. It just hasn't lined up for us. So, yeah, we'll end our turn and then consider at the end of their turn. Probably want to find ourselves a land. We will decline. Uh, we need to draw the land. So that we can... To play our farmers. Okay, so there's a decent chance they have flipped a switch here. Um, let's attack them. I'd rather an eccentric farmer get countered at this point than an organ hoarder. So that's probably what I'm gonna play here. All right, we milled an angler. Yeah, our deck has four eccentric farmers, but they just haven't lined up with the uh, with things the way we would have wanted in an ideal world. So I think we probably... Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I think we probably put Locked in the Cemetery on this. They may be able to sack it, which kind of sucks for us, but I'm kind of okay with it. Do we play yet another eccentric farmer here? I kind of think we do. We've gotten a land every time, which has been a little lucky because every time we've milled at least one land, but. So I'm hoping Winterthorn Blessing will do some work here to help us close this one out. Yeah, that's annoying. They elected not to pay the kicker, though. Which is good news for us, I think. Because now we go Winterthorn Blessing, counter. We have enough to even pay for Flip the Switch here, if that's their plan. And that's probably what their plan is. I don't know why else they wouldn't have paid the kicker. So we can counter it. Uh, or pay for it if they do. It does mean we don't get to add anything else to the board, but we bash in for seven, and all they have is two tapped creatures. So, yeah. Okay, they killed the big one. That's sad for him. But I think we just play Root Coil Creeper and Scob Wrangler here. They have two tapped things. We have a Winterthorn Blessing in our graveyard. That makes some sense. Um, okay. So... I think I probably play Timberland Guide here.
Yeah, this format's way better than, uh, than, um, yeah. I am with you. AFR, as I've said in the past, I think is the worst limited format in the arena era. So, that's, this is certainly better. So I could try to play Organ Hoarder here. I don't think that's terrible. Good chance they counter it, but them getting a creature that can't block, not exactly a big problem for us right now. If they can exile our Winterthorn Blessing here, it's, I'm not gonna be happy, but... Okay, looks like they can't. So let's put the counter here. And we'll attack with everything. All right. Yeah, AFR, AFR had too many imbalances. Um, it was so bad, like, like, blue was so bad in that format and that it was just a big problem. Um, and the other problem was that all the really cool decks, the ones that were like cool, new, innovative things in AFR, uh, like the die roll and the dungeons, which were really cool mechanics everyone was excited to play with, those decks weren't that viable. I mean, they weren't terrible. You could end up in them, but they were, you know, on average, if those decks didn't pan out as much as the others did. And that was like, that was pretty lame. Yeah, Diagraph Horde would have been pretty nasty in that game. I think we probably still would have gotten there. We had them so low on life, and, you know, they would have only had two blockers uh, that we probably still would have gotten there, but, yeah. We had the Wrangler, actually, so the Wrangler could have helped us tap down some stuff, and, uh, yeah, I think we probably still would have gotten there. No blue mana to start, but I think that's acceptable. We're on the draw, so that makes it a lot more acceptable. And, you know, yeah. This is the first time in this format I've played 15 lands, but it's also the first time where I've had, like, one consider and four uh, farmers and a really low curve. Like, everything about this deck lined up perfectly for a little 15 land deck with... You know, a great curve and everything. I think M21 was interesting because it, I mean, was a better format because it was more balanced. Um, you're right that it, you know, it was a core set, so you didn't do that much that was interesting, but it was, it was fine. We've been pretty lucky. We've kept a few two landers where we didn't have a color and then we just drew the other one, you know. That's been pretty nice. <laughs> Ah, so they're a black-green uh, deck. They whiffed on a land there, which is always rough. Um, so I have four mana here. That doesn't really do much for me, though, overall. I could Dryad's Revival and replay Death Bonnet Sprout. That's not bad. No, I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Not awesome, granted, but I think it was fine. Uh-oh. Well, that's not good. Um, we're not that far away from being able to kill him. So, yeah, we're going to kill him. Uh, and here's how we're going to do it. We're going to use Winterthorn Blessing... And dual for dominance here. Uh, we'll tap down this. Then dual for dominance. Get him out of here. And then we'll rumble for four. I don't think that's true at all. I don't think there was... I think blue being as bad as it was in AFR was like the first time 
in a very long time that we ever saw one color so much worse than another one. Oh, well, there's Slogurk. Um, yeah. And was it perfectly balanced? No, no set is. I mean, they can't be. Um, but it was way more balanced than AFR was. So, we we'll probably just use Consider here. Uh, yeah, we'll put that into our graveyard. We don't need any more lands. <laughs> we draw one anyway. So, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not blocking. So, I'm just going to rumble here. Yeah, I will get Slogurk back someday, it's true. Oh, look who's back. The card we narrowly managed to beat last time. Ugh. Not good. Uh, there's not really any way for us to take it down. I mean, getting Duel back right now doesn't do it. It's tempting to get slow Gurk back, but that's a little too slow, Gurk. Because yeah, I could play Dryad's Revival, get slow Gurk back, then play my farmer. But that's not that's just gonna be too slow. I don't think red white cycling was actually that good in Aquaria. I mean it was it was really good, but it wasn't so good that like three players could be drafting it and the deck was still insane. So, you know, it was it was self correcting in that sense. All right, so we'll pass the turn here. We will be able to use our Death Bonnet Sprout to shrink these blobs, but what we really need to do is... Well, so much for that plan. All right, so we'll block this. Take six. Decent chance they have a trick here, but I think we're going to be in better shape. Yeah, they could also play the thing that kills something that was damaged. No. Oof. Sure doesn't feel like a 15 land deck right now, does it? Uh. <laughs> okay. Three, four. We got seven. Get back Winterthorn Blessing. Yeah, we managed to beat one earlier, but we were really far ahead when our opponent played it. And we still only narrowly got there, so... Yeah. Um... <laughs> Ugh. Dryad's Revival Death Bonnet Sprout isn't terrible, but it's not good either. I mean, we're dead most ways you roll it here, but I guess what we do is get back the Sprout so we have a blocker. Not really what I want to be doing. Winterthorn Blessing maybe is the safer play there, I guess, but... It's not great. Another kill spell means we're dead. Yeah. So I think we were dead either way. So we can block one of these and take eight. Yeah. So that's so much for a seven and oh, you know. Down to six and one we go. Thank you for the resub, Hybrum. And thank you for the follow, Immortal One. And GRHX. All right. We've got two more chances to get our seventh win here.
All right, pretty good hand. Turn one considers a nice little thing to have. Oh yeah, the aggressive rotten reunion. So let's consider here. Oof. I think we decline. It's way too good of a card to discard, and we have two two drops anyway, so yeah. Now we have another one. Uh let's play the sentry. really need a land because I kind of need to clear shot that flesh taker. I guess maybe I can get away with letting it live here. We can lock it down with locked in the cemetery uh, pretty soon. All right, yeah. So let's attack with our sentry. And I'm going to play my farmer in my second main phase. The problem is that it can potentially get so large, clear shot doesn't work, but that's pretty unlikely this early in the game. So I think we just, we want to hit another forest is what we want to do. And we do. And we grab it. So we take a flesh taker attack here, obviously. Things pretty sweet. Okay, well, if they don't attack us, we don't take it. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's how that works. Uh, okay. So I like to wait a turn on the auger on a turn like this, because then I can get the free land off the top later. I'm a little worried about what they could have here, but if their plan is sack their zombie, I may be able to blow everything out with a clear shot. Um... The problem is if they have a response, we're gonna be, we're gonna get wrecked. But I think, I think the right thing to do here is attack. So uh, if they just want to trade, we we're down with that. So I think we let the we we say next to damage, see if we can get them to tap another land. They do. Uh, so I think that means we go clear shot, kill flesh taker. Does that work out for us? Yes, it does. You know, with the amount of graveyard stuff in our deck, we're pretty happy for them to exile a clear shot there, I would say. Okay, well, she's going to transform. We are one card short in our graveyard of being able to lock her down, and she can return the things. That's not so good. So I think we play our auger here. Then probably Ska Wrangler, and we have to go a little more defensive because we just can't let her bring back more than Flesh Taker. I mean, just taking Flesh Taker back is bad enough. So, yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I can play the Wrangler and keep her from reanimating anything if I don't attack, which is maybe the, the right move, especially if we have an Augur of Autumn in play. Um, I can actually still attack with one thing, so I guess I will. And then play the Wrangler. So we'll tap her down to keep her from attacking. And after we play our Farmer, we'll have enough cards in our graveyard for Locked in the Cemetery to do its thing. I wonder what they're considering doing here. It has me a little concerned.
much less concerned about that than I am Dauntless Avenger, which I can lock down now, so that's probably what we do. They do have a um, sacrifice stuff in their deck, obviously, so it's not going to be optimal, but letting the Avenger bring things back is bonkers. Like, if we let them bring back Flesh Taker that turn, it would have been a pretty monstrous turn. Even though we had, like, reasonable blocks, like, the amount of value they would have gotten out of it would have just been too much, um, I think. So... Let's play our Farmer first here and see if we can get a land back on top. Um, I mean, yeah. I think that's the plan. I guess I can attack first, but... Yeah, let's play our Farmer. And so we get back a land. I guess we'll take a Forest. Uh, we're gonna go to combat. Rumble with both of those. Yep, that's fine by us. And then, yeah, we locked in the cemetery, the Avenger. We're in pretty good shape here. Getting Coven would be nice, but we're very far away from it. Uh, <laughs> all our creatures have the same exact power of two. Wow, that's aggressive. So that's the sacrifice I didn't want them to have, but letting me keep Augur of Autumn over the Wrangler? I don't know about that. Although, I guess we they know what's in their hand, obviously. And the Wrangler would have been more of a problem for them, clearly. So Dryad's Revival. Don't really have anything I want to get back at this point. Um, I'm not brave enough to attack with the Augur... You know, it gives us too much value. Now, the Bird Admirer wouldn't give us Coven because we'd still only have two powers. It does get us closer, though. It does get us closer. Double Shady Traveler. Okay, um, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, I can get back locked in the cemetery, but what if I get back locked in the cemetery and swing out? None of my creatures can die and they go to one? That seems pretty good. Duel for Dominance doesn't do it. I could get back the Harvest Entry for Coven, but I think getting back locked in the cemetery is just going to be better for us. Then we just attack all. I guess they go to two here, potentially, but... Yeah, they go to two. They have to play enough blockers here to not die. We're drawing Death Bonnet Sprout, which will transform pretty quickly. Actually, it won't right now, unless another one of our creatures dies. Yeah, that is not two blockers. All right, we got there. We got to seven wins. We didn't quite get the 7-0, but we got the 7-1. It was a very sweet blue-green deck, uh, so pretty happy with that. You know, our first two drafts of the day didn't go so great. This one went really well, so kind of evens out.